Good evening and shalom. We give honor to God and to our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark, to all of you who are tuning in on this evening uh, as we share God's word. Good to uh, be before you and uh, been having a lot of fun in this space uh, talking about abundant living um, and about our journey. Um, we've been talking about journey and um, with the hope that everyone would grow confident in giving voice to the particularities of their experiences, uh, that we all grow by sharing our faith with each other. And the feedback uh, has been wonderful. Uh, it's been exciting. It's been uplifting for me and prayerfully for all of you. And uh, I just want to pause and say thank you to all of you who've been a part of our conversations on Sunday as well as those of you who have emailed me your responses. Uh, again, I have thoroughly enjoyed reading and hearing uh, from each and every last one of you. At the close of last week's lesson, the question raised was to look at your favorite biblical character and to see how many shifts you could find in their journey. How did they change and what lessons did they learn? Hopefully um, you had some fun with that question. And uh, I'm going to lift some of the responses uh, that were shared in conversation as well as uh, some that were sent in. But before I do that, I want to lift a couple of new responses to the questions regarding our journey from last week. And um, as I've said before, I'm simply sharing the perspectives of those who've done the assignment. Uh, at this point, it is not mine to uh, disagree with or to critique it, but to hear it and hopefully glean from it something that might uh, help me on my own journey. And I uh, want that to be everyone, everyone else's position as well. Tracy Jackson sent in her response to the series of questions involving our journey. I'll take this moment to, to read it. Tracy serves as head of our ushers ministry. It's doing a wonderful job week in and week out. How do biblical passages such as Romans 8 and 28 fit our journey? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. This passage resonates in my spirit and is one I recite almost daily, particularly during those times when things happen that I don't understand and or out of my control. These words from the Lord remind me to do my best to surrender my will to his and trust that everything will be all right. This is a scripture that is cited and recited often. However, I've noticed that folks leave off the last part who have been called according to his purpose. This part is key because the Lord does require actions from his children. He gives us free will, but he desires that we seek him spend time with him and in his word. And I believe purpose will only be revealed by God to us. And until we make efforts to build a relationship with him, the opportunity to truly know our purpose is slim. But of course, God is so merciful and kind and loving. He provides and allows experiences on our journey to prepare us for purpose. 
because he knows what that is, because he knows that is even when we don't. He knows what that is. Forgive me, Tracy. He knows what that is even when we don't. And that's what I trust on my journey. The response above answers another question you posed. What has journey taught me the most? I'll add that journey has taught me that God uses all of our experiences to provide an opportunity for us to grow into who he's made us to be. What is difficult about journey? Definitely surrendering to the will of God. As an adult, the world teaches us to be in control, but surrendering brings me peace that surpasses understanding. This peace is motivation for surrender, and I trust the Lord's love for me and his grace and mercy is as real as he is. Galatians 6 and 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. This is another passage that encourages, comforts, and motivates me to remain steadfast in the Lord on my journey. Who are key people in my journey and what have I learned from them? My mother is a key person in my journey. I watched her serve in ministry in the church. I was raised in from my earliest remembrance until she was unable to do so due to health issues that ultimately led to her transition. Her example of service to the Lord settles in my spirit today. She shared much with me about her journey, but one of the things she used to say still sticks in my head. Every tub's got to stand on its own bottom. On the day of reckoning, the Lord won't be asking me about what other people said or did in their lives. Those words have and do help me stay focused and moving forward in my life and on my journey with the Lord without the cares of others weighing me down. What has given me the most joy in my journey? To know that God hears and answers prayer gives me the most joy. I can look back and see that the Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. God didn't give up on me. People did, but my Lord did not. Thank you, Lord. I also look at my children and granddaughter and see answered prayers. I'm going to continue praying and trusting. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What advice would I give the next generation regarding journey? I advise young people to keep up prayer and that prayer doesn't have to be elaborate or in the prostrate position, but call on the Lord, seek his help and thank him daily for the good in their lives. Just say the name Jesus from your heart and with love and sincerity and the Lord hears and will respond. Also, don't fall into the trap of the enemy who will tell you because you've done this or that, that you can't come to God. God is merciful and loves us in a manner we can't even imagine. Always know God is there for you. Thank you for sharing all of this. Tracy, forgive me for, uh, for stumbling through it. Um, but thank you. Thank you for sharing and for your faithfulness and ministry uh, every week. Secondly, Minister Beverly Harris responded to the question, is there a distinction between your journey and destiny? Is there a distinction between journey and destiny. And in essence, she states that there is a distinction 
since the journey is a Christian journey or a spiritual journey. And since the journey is uh, a Christian journey, that the ultimate destination is one of glory. That on the journey, there will always be an adversary and there will always be struggle, but the journey will end on a high note that the glory will far outweigh the suffering. And uh, there is a passage, as I was reflecting on what she said, uh, I think there's a passage that supports her point that I want to lift quickly. Found in 2 Corinthians 4. Read 7 through 9 and 16 through 18. If you don't have this passage in your journals or highlight it, I want to encourage you to do so. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 16, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And as it relates to our journey being a spiritual journey. Thank you for your perspective, uh, Minister Harris. I think passages such as the one uh, just lifted will serve to undergird us um, as our journey takes many twists and turns. So again, thank you. Tracy and Minister Harris for sharing with us. And for those of you who would like to respond to uh, the above questions, it's not too late. These questions will uh, remain on the floor. And you can email me your responses at tgclark at shalomccop.org. I'd love to hear from more of you. And um, don't think that you have to be overly impressive with your responses, not looking for that. Uh, I'm simply looking for you to be sincere. And so again, for those who don't have the questions, here they are. What has journey taught you most? What is difficult about journey? Who are some key people in your journey and what have you learned from them? What has given you the most joy in your journey? What has been the biggest surprise? And what advice would you share with the next generation? And how do passages like Romans 8 and 28 fit your journey? Feel free to answer any or all of the above questions and have some fun. Have some fun with them. And secondly, on last week, we closed with another question or another layer to the conversation. Um, the question was to look at your favorite biblical character. How many shifts could you find in their journey? How did they change and what lessons did they learn? And uh, I'll share some of the responses that have been sent in and shared per our conversation. The characters lifted in discussion were Paul, David, Abraham, and Sarah. Different people with 
totally different journeys. Uh, Paulette Edwards said that we can draw from their journeys and it will help guide us toward where God would have us to be. That as their journey serves as a testimony to us, our journey can serve as a testimony to those coming behind us. I like that. Uh, the character David was lifted by Deacon Damon Norfolk. And Damon lifts that David was a shepherd. He was a poet. He was a giant killer, a king, an ancestor of Jesus, a man after God's own heart, a betrayer, an adulterer, a murderer. Uh, and I love, I want to add this. Uh, I love how the Bible lays bare David's strengths and his flaws. That the Bible does not hide anything from us that we see it all. And I think that this is crucial to know and accept not only about David, but about ourselves and each other. Everybody has strengths and flaws. Everybody. And we should grow to embrace both. If we're not at a place now on our journey where we can accept and embrace both the strengths and the weaknesses that we all have. Uh, perhaps uh, now is the time to grow to do that. Grow to do that, knowing that um, it can only help you. It can't hurt you. It can only help me. Can't hurt me. It can only help us. It can't hurt us. Embrace both sides. Embrace both sides. Um, what I've discovered is that it is easier to embrace our strengths than it is to embrace our flaws. Why is this? Why is this? But we know that the Bible has no problem embracing either. And it lays bare both sides of the characters in Scripture. The Bible doesn't pull any punches. It gives us all the good and all the bad of all the characters. And it makes for interesting stories. So what is true of David is true of of all the characters that we read. And uh, the beauty is that we get a chance to see a lot of ourselves in them. And we also get a chance to see how God works through them and through us in spite of the flaws. And we can talk on and on. Uh, about this aspect of uh, human personality and journey. Uh, the main shift in David's journey was from a shepherd to a king, Damon lifts. That he went from being a shepherd in Israel to being the king of Israel. And there's so much uh, that happened uh, in that transition. We don't have time tonight to get into that. I wouldn't mind getting into that in conversation. But he went from being a shepherd in Israel to being the king. David was a worshiper. He was a king who had no problem worshiping at any point. Uh, in his journey, that David always gave God all the praise he deserved. So 
sometimes to the dismay of those closest to him. He was a worshiper. Uh, one change that he made, Damon lifts, is that he learned to repent and ask God for forgiveness. I think that's quite notable. Uh, a notable part of his life and journey, and it's notable for ours as well. I think we can learn a lot from David uh, in this area. Uh, psalm 51 is a notable psalm of repentance by David, and I want to read a portion of that. Very familiar place. Psalm 51, uh, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me against you and you only. Have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge? Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Powerful, powerful words from this man after God's own heart. Um, add this again to your journal. Uh, read over it. Include it in your prayer or pray it in your prayer time, and it'll be a blessing to you. And uh, Paulette adds that with all of David's ups and downs, uh, what he did was endured. That he always endured. And I think that's also uh, notable as well and a testament to his faith. In fact, this is what lands him uh, in the hall of faith in Hebrews 11. So thank you, Damon and Paulette for sharing with us. Speaking of endurance, secondly, the character Paul was lifted by Annette Irby and Georgia Taylor. I want to read George's response One of my favorite biblical characters in scripture other than Jesus who is and will always be uh, and still is my favorite because he is Lord but when you talk about a character it brings to mind Paul the apostle also known as Saul before he was converted he was a Roman scholar he was like a high-class prosecutor, very brilliant in the laws of the Roman Empire. Well, we all know that shifted. He persecuted and killed anybody and everybody that believed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. I didn't like Paul when he was Saul because he was very mean and evil towards God's children. But that all changed when he was on his journey to Damascus to persecute and stone the Christians and Jesus' disciples. But during that murderous journey, 
On that road to Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Acts 9, 1 through 9. At that point of the journey, Saul didn't know who was talking to him, but he found out it was Jesus. He was blinded by the light, but in my opinion, he was always blind, even when he had vision. He was a blind man, and when it came to him knowing the real light of the world, which presented another shift in his journey. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, converted Saul to Paul on that journey to Damascus. Saul was given instructions to see a man that would restore his vision. The man, Ananias, laid hands on Saul like he was told to, and immediately the scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again, hence another shift. He got up and was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And God used him as an instrument to carry his name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the people of Israel. Jesus showed Paul how much he would suffer for his name. Once again, another shift from Paul, from Saul being a persecutor to being a preacher in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. People were baffled and conspired to kill him. Once again, another shift. Yet, uh, he grew more and more powerful in proving that Jesus is the Christ. So during that journey, Paul learned that he was going to suffer on behalf of Jesus Christ, just like the people he persecuted on behalf of Jesus Christ. And what I like about Paul was that he was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit by living in fear of the Lord. Saul on his journey had seen the Lord. The Lord spoke to him and he was blinded and he started preaching after his vision was restored. Fearlessly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he learned that Jesus is Lord. He was converted to become Paul the Apostle, spreading the word of God. Thank you, Georgia. And uh, she adds that he had many journeys and uh, survived them all. Annette Irby uh, agrees with this take and adds that the surprise on his journey was that he was not expecting God to switch things around on him the way that God did. And what a surprise that was on the Damascus Road. Um, this, this is uh, what I found interesting about Annette's comments that uh, she says that uh, like Paul, she was too converted. She was converted from someone who talked about the church to someone who joined the church and who now serves faithfully in the church that she was not expecting to be a part of the church. Uh, but that was an unexpected shift uh, in her journey. And I want to ask this question. How many people do you know that are like this? You know, they used to have nothing but bad things to say about the church. Uh, but now they're at a different stage in their journey and have grown to embrace the very thing that they used to criticize. How many people do you know that are like this? Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe there are persons you know that have started out as advocates for the church, but have now, at this different stage in their journey, grown increasingly distant from the church. This happens quite often on both sides. But thank you, Georgia, and thank you, Annette. Uh, I want to close with uh, these last two characters that were briefly lifted and whom I hope to uh, have much more dialogue 
about in the future, uh, Abraham and Sarah, which was lifted by Deacon Anthony Clark. And Anthony is amazed at how God can start a new thing with old people. And it shows that in God, there is no limitation. And I don't think we can say that enough. In God, there is no limitation. And this is the lesson that Abraham and Sarah learned. Uh, to put it in the angel's words, there is nothing too hard for God. They had a son named Isaac, which means laughter. Because when Sarah learned that she would have a son in her old age, she laughed. Are there things that you find laughable right now on your journey? Things that you feel are so far out of reach that it seems like a big joke? And if it is, I encourage you tonight to reflect on the journey of Abraham and Sarah. Take a look at their journey. What you may find funny right now, God may have a uh, pleasant surprise for you up the road. Uh, take a look at what happened with those two persons. Paulette adds to this that God had already predestined the destiny, but that Abraham didn't know the journey. He didn't know where he was going. And this is one of the things that makes him the father of faith, that he is the first uh, to do something as radical as taking God, whom he did not know, at God's word. So thank you, Deacon Clark and Paulette, for, for your sharing. I think that one of the things that makes all of our journeys interesting is the mystery in it. That there is so much that we don't know, and yet we are called to live trusting God. And it is in this tension uh, that many surprises can happen. And so my question this week is this. If you could know everything up front about your journey, would you want to know? If you could know everything up front about where you're going, about your destination, would you want to know why or why not? I look forward to your responses, either through conversation or email again. T.G. Clark at ShalomCCOP.org. Reach out to me. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I'll be glad to, uh, to hear them and to uh, respond to them. Lord, thank you once again for our time together. Continue to strengthen us through your word and through our sharing with one another. We love you so much. We know that neither drawing from your word or sharing with each other our journey is ever in vain. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You all take care, stay safe, and I look forward to sharing with you on next week. Shalom. It's offering time, Shalom. You may call the office at 314-653-2300. Drop off or mail your check to the church at 5491 North Highway 67, Florissant, Missouri, 63034. 
through Realm via the church website at www.shalomccop.org. Or you may text SCCOP to 73256. In the summer months, we ask that you contribute your time or funds to beautify or supply for those in our community. For everyone who did, we thank you, we appreciate you, and God bless you. Save the date for the annual Shalom Church Health Fest, which will be held on Saturday, October 8th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Hazelwood East High School. Be on the lookout for more information regarding our Shalom Golden Age meet and greet. Golden Age is for men and women ages 70 and older. Join us for our weekly Wisdom Wednesday services at 7 p.m. via live stream. Stay connected with us by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. Let's remember Shalom family. Even during these unprecedented times, we are still committed to Christ's work through preaching, teaching, and praying. Those are your announcements. Stay safe. Remember to mask up and have a blessed week.